Sock em boppers, sock em hey, boppers, well, we don't blow have, em up, and we don't hit your rights. friends. We don't have any of the rights for that. I'm sure the <laughs> soccer proper people are going to come after you. You can sing. So I looked into it a little bit. I looked <laughs> just for this. I can sing whatever I want. Sancho. Sancho. I. I am Sancho. You. You are not Sancho. Extra spicy. But I am Sancho. Oh, it's nice to see Strong Bad on there. That's a you, classic. You, you like that? That's a that's a classic character name. And there's our boy uh, Sassy Ass Sal hanging oh, out. Oh, he's back. He's back, baby. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez, oh, Rick. Oh, no. Oh, no, my controller's not oh, working. no, not the controller. Hang on, I'll fix it. We'll, we'll do the thing. What the... I fixed it. Yay! <laughs> you know those, uh, you know, like uh, in Criminal Minds and whatnot, and they 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 tip tap away there. Oh, the hacking. The hacking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hit one key on my computer to fix the problem. I didn't hit thirty keys to fix the problem. It almost never works out like that. I hit one key. So we decided to uh, to wrap back around in our in this isn't our season two premiere, but it's kind of close. Um, are you kidding me? Sort of a de facto premiere. All right, so that works. Why isn't the controller working? I don't know. You said it was one button. It was one button. <laughs> I was assured it was one button. So we we worked. Piece of junk. Oh. All right. Oh. There we go. Oh. So we decided to wrap back around back to Dark Souls Three because Elden Ring comes out soon. I don't know when this is going to air, so I'm not going to say, like, soon. next week. Yeah, we don't just go know by it. dates. We just... Soon. This is going to come out before Elden Ring. Not now, but near now. This is about where we left off. As you can tell from our previous videos, Sassy Ass Sal has got a bit of a cosmetic upgrade. He has a, a lovely head wrap and uh, dual-wielding swords now. Gotta love the dual wield. I love his tiny little skinny arm po pointing out of his out of his armor. I love that that's a character that you create. That's just my life. <laughs> just every day. Look at his tiny skinny arm. If you're imagining the guy who has been referred to on this show as smaller than a great Dane, slightly smaller than a great Dane. Yeah, just imagine the arms on that guy. Not even like a big great Dane. Either. Not even just an extra large, the biggest great Dane you've ever seen. A, a relatively small great Dane. Off to a bumpy start there. As is the as is the way with Dark Souls games, man. I would say it's like two boxers taped together. That's about game. that size, dog. These games are tough, boy. No, you're an expert at these, though. At no, this I'm point. not. I mean, compared to me, I used to be super intimidated by these games. I would. I don't think I would call myself an expert at any video game, just knowing what's out there. Wow! Ah, these guys are. But I, oh, he's a fast boy. Yeah, he's quicker than he looks. All right, let's get some juice in there. Mm -hmm. There's a sneaky boy over here. I know that. I see you. Yeah. There we go. So while you're slicing and dicing around this room, what what you been doing with yourself? You been you been watching anything good? You been doing anything fun? I need to I need to track my subscription services because. Oh like, yeah. Out of hand are they? Are like all those clickbait articles? They feel like it sometimes. So I, I see like every now and then you'll be scrolling through the TikToks or whatever. <laughs> and uh, like a sponsored ad will pop up and it's some guy. And they're, they're, those are sneaky ads, man. Because mm -hmm. at first you're like, is this an advertisement? Or am I... Yeah, this is an ad. All right. Yeah, see, this is an ad. You see the little sponsor thing at the bottom of the screen and you're like, all right, this is an ad. I, they, they got me. Good one. And it's always some guy adding up numbers, and it, the idea is Ooh, that it's a, with an X. They make a... I don't even know what to call them, but they're some kind of, like, subscription management services. Yeah, that's basically... Yeah, that's the gist of it. Yeah, I don't know what they're called either. But It's you, where you consolidate your... No, here's the great, thing, Off to a great start, you died. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, suck. I, I warned you, tall boy with an X. Tall yeah, boy with an X. You. We'll come back. We'll come back to him. It's fine. So Now you know what you're doing. But yeah, it... it Here's my thing. If if I could go onto a site or an app or service or whatever, type in all my subscriptions, and it goes, yeah, you got a lot of subscriptions. Maybe don't have so many. <laughs> I could just maybe do don't that. have so many. I could just do that. How's that even a service? What are they actually doing? Besides They're not doing listing my services. They're, that I provide them the information. You're with. subscribing to yet another service. That's what it seems like. So now you got to pay. You got to pay Joe Blow three dollars a month. Just for him to tell you that you have a problem. Like, I have a service that 
tells me when certain bills are due. Okay. So it's like a hub for those. Is it called your bank? You know? But it, it's not my bank. But I mean, yeah, that's essentially what it's functioning like. It's functioning as just a, a service a bank would provide of like, hey, this is, hey, here's a quick email reminder that like this such and such bill is going to come due at, you know, two, three days, whatever. Right. Is it like that for your, it'll be like, hey, do you still want Netflix this month? Because you're about to pay for it. Right. It's like that. I don't have anything like that, but. Like we we've been really good about budgeting lately. We're mm-hmm. we're saving up for a, a new thing, and we've both been beans and rice counting every penny. You know. Yeah, doing your best to yeah pinch them. But counting every penny in the way that I still want to I still want to have stuff. For sure. And one of the stuff that I had a hard time giving up, and we now have again, is HBO Max. I know I. I only really have HBO Max because it is one of the more expensive streaming services to get as a it's, standalone. I thing. got the notification on my phone the other day. It's like, hey, it was Sunday, actually. Oh, and your free month is over? No. Well, no. It's it, been over. The free month has been over for some time. It's just like, hey, it's that Sunday, about halfway through the month, shortly before Dune came out that one month. Mm-hmm. And uh, we went ahead and took fourteen ninety nine out of your bank account. That's what said. I'm saying. It's, ex- it's, I'm like, it's ah, expensive. That is- Netflix is going up again. Uh, it's going up a dollar or two, and I'm like, "What does that mean? What, what do you mean a dollar or two? Are we? At, are How we, vague is that? Are we officially at twice as much as it started as? Is I that think where so. We're at now. Oh, that's locked. All right. But pretty close. So, what's the solution? Just watch as many documentaries as you can. Yes. Try to get your your money's worth. I love a good documentary, and I don't even care what the documentary is about. If it's highly rated and it's sought after and people recommend it it's probably going to be a good whatever it doesn't matter what it's about either a good documentary can make you care about whatever the subject is i watch documentaries about huge you know worldwide events all the way down to one guy's afternoon you know a (laughs) minuscule kind of thing or it can be on a huge scale but it's yeah if it's presented well it's it can be super enthralling uh, one that I saw recently that I didn't know I cared about came as a recommendation from you, and it is on HBO Max. It's called Beanie Mania, and it's still in the popular the the popular category on HBO Max. So people are getting a kick out of this, and probably people our age. I think yeah, people are just kind of oh, I'll give this a shot, and they'll yeah they're discovering it kind of on their own and through a little bit of word of mouth. I think. Oh yeah, definitely either on their own or word of mouth. Like they go to work and go, you got to see Beanie Mania. It is gonna. It is going to mess you up, man. Well, even like us, I was, I think, five minutes into watching it, and I texted you and said, hey, this starts with a, with a Soccer Boppers commercial. <laughs> soccer Boppers, Soccer hey, Boppers, well, we don't blow have, them up, and we don't hit your rights. friends. We don't have any of the rights for that. I'm sure the <laughs> Soccer Bopper people are going to come after you us. You can sing. So I looked into it a little bit. I looked into <laughs> it just for this. I can sing whatever I want, all right? I can't play whatever I want. But I if I want to sing, I don't know that that's no, true. No, let me finish. If right. I want to sing "Partners in Crime," "Turtle Power," all right, from heart, that's my business. That's got nothing to do with them. I don't play any of their beats. I don't play anything. All I'm doing, you could just recite the lyrics. All I'm doing is reciting the lyrics all right. in a rhythmic pattern because <laughs> I memorize how it goes. Your Honor, my client, as you can clearly see. I knew all the he's, words. Is reciting a word that c- could mean so many things. Leonardo, he's the leader of the group. Now, now, who amongst you has not thought that independently <laughs> of some sort of theme song? Here's the thing: we're gonna come back. We're gonna get. We're this gonna get sidetracked. Witch hunt. We're gonna get sidetracked. But On make make a. Top, so I, I almost want you to write this down because I need to revisit that topic sometime because I do want to talk about that. But right now we're talking about Beanie Babies, and. And yeah, I didn't want to shift focus there. I'm sorry. Yeah, beanie babies are what's important here. Beanie babies are not what's important, but it's what we're talking about. So here we are. We're gonna we're gonna stay focused. Lashing these guys, rooftop to rooftop, talking beanie babies. This is us in our element. I feel like I had to think real hard about if I had any beanie babies as a kid, and I don't think I had a single beanie baby in pos- in my possession. I sought out one. Oh, um, you had one that was like I had. I had one that I wanted. That was yours. And we we just saw. We were looking at before we started recording. We were looking at a list of Beanie Babies, and I think it was Iggy the Iguana, who's not an iguana at all. Chameleon, right? He's a chameleon. He's got a curly tail. He's got a, like a like a hunchback thing. The eyes kind of are a giveaway, right? It's 
It's a chameleon by a, by any stretch of the imagination. And you kind of do have to use your imagination to figure some of this stuff out. <laughs> yeah. Like, you, you look at a Beanie Baby and you're like, what are you supposed to do? What, what exactly what are you? Supposed are you? To be? Some of them are obvious, but like, yeah. You some kind of turtle? I'm a bear. Whatever. Yeah, sure. I... I had a few. Um, mostly just... What are you doing, man? Oh, no, man. Did all, you see that? You really just... Sorry, that was intense. Now, that's what... All right. He came that's what you. an assassin does. Yeah. Assassin waits... For you to come around the corner and then comes up behind you and stabs you in the back. He was into it. That guy was after me. Was and he got me one, too. I think someone got me. That was excellent. Jeez. That scared the poop out of me. So anyway. So the only ones I really had were just ones that, like, extended relatives would give me for random birthdays. Right. It was like some that. event, and they said, I know what to get you. It was that literal thing of, oh, I'm going to stop at the pharmacy before I go to this kid's birthday party and get him a beanie baby. Because that's <laughs> what kids like, I guess. And that's where you got them. You got them and at... you had to get them there. Which I didn't really put together at the time, but watching this documentary, they were very clear that that was the marketing strategy. It was, it was by design, yeah. It was by design, and I never really put that together at the time. I don't think we were as connected to, to the marketing strategies of these companies. <laughs> no, we, we were like, now. cool, Beanie Babies. We were just like, hey, they're at, they're at places. So my grandfather owned a pharmacy when I was a kid. He was a pharmacist, and he had his own pharmacy. And he sold Beanie Babies. I'd love it if you were like, he was a blacksmith. He, was, he owned his own pharmacy. <laughs> so I said, I said, Grandpa, I need a favor. And I didn't ask for much, but I said, I'd like to have this Beanie Baby. Show me your bears, old man. And he goes, we don't, we don't got it. <gasps> And I go, what do you mean you don't got it? What Explain year was yourself. This? Was this like the height of the craze? This was probably 99. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, they're everywhere. At they that sold point. them, sure. They always had new ones coming in, and, mm -hmm. and they didn't stay very long. But he, he saw them coming in. He could have snatched one up for me. He could have easily just taken it off a pile and put it next to the register for himself at the end of his shift or whatever. Yeah. And say, I own the company. I'm they, going yeah, to go ahead and take this. He's me. like, I already bought this. I'm just yeah. giving it to someone. Yeah. So... He's like, we don't, we don't have them. We, they don't come in anymore. And come to find out, I looked into it a little bit. I think that that one was discontinued or something like that. So it was, it was in the secondary market. That's what they do. That's what they did the whole time. Is they would, there was no way to know beyond basically a few months that they would keep producing the same ones. Right. So every few months you'd get a new couple of bears or animals show up. But yeah, and if you missed one, you just kind of missed it. And that's what you, gave rise like you like you were saying to the secondary market. You missed it. Sorry. Kinda, you missed it. No, you were just forced to haggle with weirdos flea market style. And this documentary explored the lives of some of these weirdos they had a choice Ooh. about i'd say five or six different women that they that seemed to be kind of interconnected so it did we somewhat not really of a narrative but of a yeah and there was an interconnectivity to these people a lot of them dealt with each other at the time and i, I wonder if there were any men that were involved there's a couple of husbands the that i feel like were kind of a little more they, on it than maybe. you think they got kind of wrangled into it oh you know, i'm sure they were like all right yeah I'll, I'll help you with your thing it's making money why not exactly the the one lady she was saying when i showed my husband you know how much i paid for these and how versus how much i was going to sell them for he, he was on board he suddenly. was he was like oh so when are we getting more of those he goes okay yeah we we got to get some of that because at the end of the day, you could be collecting, you know, anything. And these were all, I think they were all married women. Yeah, I think they and were all pretty much just suburban moms. They they had time on their hands, and they they had they had kids. They they seemed to they seemed to be good people. They are by far the least interesting part of the documentary. Yeah. What I like is... So you thought they were the least interesting, but so I thought they were the best part of the documentary. Well, the part that I related to was where they basically just recapped the 90s and kind of what was going on and what it was like to live through it. That's what was interesting to me, is because I did remember how exciting it was. Right. I don't care about these suburban moms. No, they were the best part. That weird one that was like, yeah, my daughter started to, you know, I got it with her, and then before he knew it, it was my thing. And then that, you know, shows the daughter, and she's just like, yeah, mom got real weird. <laughs> so at first, I was, I was... <laughs> Had the attitude of, all right, these these ladies are all right. They're fine. They're fine. They're it's just they're, they're just, just nice doing... normal people who just happen to have gotten into this one cultural fad pretty hard. About halfway through, I'm like, I think I think these are bad ladies. I think they're uh, not all uh, great I ladies. I don't think they're. I don't think these are great ladies. I think they're. I think they're kind of backstabby. 
Oh, that's I think it got kind of clicky. Oh yeah, it and it got kind of clicky, and then it get a little get a little toxic when the money gets involved and stuff. And yeah, I mean, I'm sure emotions ran high more than a few times on the phone arguing over platypuses. What, you know, what was his name? Piper the platypus or whatever? Piper? No, I not Piper. Know. No, it couldn't have been. Patty the platypus? No, that's stupid. It's just stupid enough to work. <laughs> it's just stupid enough to be it's the Biggie the chameleon. <laughs> so I just saw a life bar pop on my screen <laughs> from somewhere. I Something actually, happened yeah, somewhere sure else in the game. <laughs> Someone else got punched. Like a one of the one of the ashen undead said, "I'm gonna punch you in the face." I'm gonna get punched, and I, and I get to track that guy. Oh, uh, I'm trying to think of their names. Can you look look up? Uh, no, I'm not gonna look up their names. Do look up uh, their names, please. I don't want to dignify them with names. All right, we're gonna dignify one because then they become people, and it just seems mean that we're talking mean about. But no, I. Well, we're gonna be mean about one of them. Uh, we're, we're gonna, gonna talk about little... Mary. We're gonna talk about Mary Beth. <laughs> Mary Beth was a hot mess. You know who you are. <laughs> Mary Beth ran a magazine called Beanie Baby something or another. I don't know. It said Beanie Quarterly, Baby. Quarterly, monthly, something like that. It's a magazine name. You can imagine what it would be called. Beanie, Beanie Lover Baby's World monthly. or some Beanie World. She wasn't clever. No, was it. it just called Beanie Mania? I, no. No, it, that might have been. Maybe. No, it wasn't called Beanie Mania. I remember there was and one And there you go. Now I you're hate looking. It. You drew it out and, of me. <laughs> um, no, Now I'm going to look it up. I remember there was one point in the documentary where I remember thinking, oh, they literally just took the title for this documentary. <laughs> They're not even trying. From They didn't do like a clever pun on anything. They're not even being. If I had subscribed to the magazine in the 90s, I would have known that. While you look that up, I'm going to talk about the magazine a little bit. Mary Beth was a bookie. And. She, her job was to run this magazine, which kept track of prices and things like that. This is pre everyone had the internet. The internet was available and the Beanie Babies had a website and they used it too. It was one of the earlier instances of successfully using a website to market your business. And uh, anyway, she lists the prices. She would list articles. Uh, one of the things, one of the articles that were, that was in the magazine was a lady who wrote a rap about Beanie Babies. Oh, and you they, can 1,000% buy Beanie Mania magazine from May 1999. What's it called? Wait, what? It's Beanie Mania magazine. Yeah. From May 1999, you can buy that issue for six fifty. Six hundred fifty? No, six dollars and fifty. Oh, okay. You can uh, <laughs> six hundred fifty U.S. dollars. I want to say no, six dollars and fifty cents. Free shipping. Oh, good. Well, free shipping. That's There's a buy it now saying. option. Should I just go ahead and hit that? There's already somebody else. Wa How is there someone else watching this? Dude, if I run into a thing and it doesn't have free shipping, I'm like, I don't need it. I need that buy it now option, baby. <laughs> right. I can't be up at two in the morning waiting for an auction to end, hoping that my, you know. If someone doesn't offer free shipping, I, I don't need it. I don't, need I, that I don't want it. I'm not going to buy it. Um, What were some other things that Mary Beth did? Mary Beth was a... She was probably... She's the one that stuck out to me the most because she seemed like she was mm -hmm. the shadiest. <laughs> yeah. She definitely had uh, she was up to a no lot good. going on. Yeah. She gets sued by Thai Toy Company or whatever they're called. Yeah. I, I know just, they're called Thai Toys or you whatever. You can't profit off of our property. Right. They said, you have to change the name of the magazine. We get it. You're stoked about our products. But, like, I couldn't just start Captain Crunch Magazine. Like, they'd be mad at me. I think that it was more of a cease and desist rather yeah, than... Yeah. like, you got to stop this. You can't just be... Yeah, I don't think they went after her monetarily. I think they just said, hey, you can't... You can't associate yourself with us or seem like you're associated with you're, us. You're profiting off our brand. Mm -hmm. They may have sued her. I really don't... I I need to rewatch the documentary. They may, I mean, we're gonna have to at this point because oh, now, yeah, yeah. It's just to, just to go through those soccer bopper commercials. Pump that again. Up. I'm gonna revisit the game just slightly here. So I'm raising my strength. If you're just tuning in, by the way, halfway through the video, like you're it's a radio station lengths. playing Dark Souls Three, and uh, with weenie in the butt, <laughs> with weenie in the butt. <laughs> uh, I'm doing a quality build. Oh, okay. What that means is that I'm trying to get my dexterity and my strength both up to 40. And that's basically the easiest way to play the game. Uh, just about every weapon is accessible then. And it's a pretty safe bet that you're going to do okay damage-wise. You still have to be... You still have to play the game well. Right. You, you can't just... It's still a punishing game. You can't just fly through this. But for this version of Sassy SL, I picked a... Uh, what just happened? There we go. Mm. I picked a mercenary for my class rather than the assassin because I, I thought the assassin was kind of dumb. <gasps> and the what? the mer the mercenary comes with this this cool armor here. Did and we talk about these are the only guys that ever built? <laughs> right. 
<laughs> shirtless buff white haired guys there's always a guy like that he's who's the blacksmith just pound just pounding out this metal guy. he is he is thick what do you want kid i gotta make some lightning bolts for is zeus he, after this are those veins or is that like patchy hair or are they oh, burns that is a combination of burns i think and okay and scars just at, scars in general because yeah i think it's supposed to imply that he works with a forge so like there's going to be some burns associated with it like if you make pizza for a living maybe right, flip that story over. i think you got it like maybe flip it over i love this i love this expansive world all for this animatic <laughs> right whack whack thwack, thwack. Uh, i'm reinforcing my estus flask which gives me more juice to heal which is always Ooh. good it's a, a handy deal. The first thing I did was I emptied out my Ashen Estus Flask, which refills my magic, because I've tried to make uh, like magic wielders in this game. It's mm. it's tough, man. I'm not that good. I, I, I've done similar things in like Skyrim and stuff, and I, yeah, I, never, I never really go with it. It's not appealing, way. is it? I just don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I just... I, I don't think I want to put the effort in. No, and it's a lot of effort you have to put into it. And Yeah, there's like a wall I hit where I'm like, all right, I've maxed out kind of as much as i want to learn so this guy do. comes with the uh the the cell sword twin blades and the the joke in the dark souls community is that it's the cell sword wind blades that's hilarious hilarious wow wow because they're kind of they're kind of cheese i mean i mean you know they make the game easier sure they hit pretty hard and they you, you get stuff done with these things but here's the thing i'm doing a show and i'm trying to have a good time so I, give me a break. I really like. I don't fully buy into just exponentially making things harder is somehow making it better or a more satisfying experience. No, shouldn't you be trying to have fun? And that's what I don't like about. Uh, so two two games in the Dark Souls series I have gripes with is Demon Souls the first one. Okay. Which when you died it halved your life. Oof. That's how it punished you. Yeah. You came back with half of your life and there were only two ways that you could refill your life for you either had to beat a boss at half life uh, or find some kind of special item that would do it for you restored your humanity i think is what it's called okay now look I otherwise you were at half life the whole time and i understand that making for a potentially more rewarding experience yeah where I you can feel like oh i really accomplished something that was more difficult than the tradition you know it would have been i thought they were going to fix it in uh, the ps5 version they and, have not and they did not no right, uh, well, they kept it the same you know but it's it's one of those things it doesn't just because it's true for some things and in theory it can be cool and boundary pushing or whatever it doesn't always you know it isn't always true it isn't just pile on this pile on this pile on this and see how tough this game is it's super hard it must be super good so they kind of fixed it they got rid of it in Dark Souls, I think, completely. I think I'm just a pussy. I think I just like to play easy games, like <laughs> Animal Crossing and stuff, where there's no conflict at all, I, I and you can't it. lose. It's nice playing a relaxing game sometimes. It's true. That's just my style, I think. It's just I just, lean towards more that. Even in games like this, where you're running around with swords and stuff, like if I'm playing Assassin's Creed or whatever, I'm just crouching around in the shadows, just murdering everybody. I'm not yep. really doing anything. <laughs> Just relaxing. <laughs> Just hanging out. I'm having a good time. I'm either relaxing, murdering people in GTA, or designing houses in Animal Crossing. There's no in between where I'm doing actual missions. You're just like, boss, give me a hard time at work today, and I just want to have a nice I'm gonna evening. Take it out on this Doom level. I just want to. I just want to feel like a superhero. Yeah, that's why I got into the Saints Row games. So in Dark Souls 2, when you would die, um, it took away some of your life. Not all of it, just a little bit. Well, sure. And at first, you're like, yeah, I don't think you notice it at first. No, it's an interesting mechanic because it just kind of happens upon you. You're out. And then over, as you die a little more, you're like, okay. And I think it get. I, I never, I honestly never played Dark Souls 2. I just know about this. Mm -hmm. I think after you get down to like Half-Life, it stops. It says, all right. Oh, you, there was a wall that it there, There's got to be a wall there. Uh, I could be wrong. You'd correct me if I am. I don't care. Maybe it was too punishing in practice. Perhaps. Yeah. So this guy, he's, he's beefy. He's going to be tough. I gotta, ooh, I gotta focus yeah. on this Let's focus up on... Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, he is a... He's I a, like that axe, though. He's a fat boy. It's a sick axe. Kiss me, fat boy! But it's traditional big slow guy rules, you know? He's gonna take a minute to wind up. Yeah, but then he just keeps going! Yeah, he does have quite a bit of turn to him. Oh, A lot of torque. Is that what that is? Torque? Yeah, we'll go with that. I don't know. Uh, I know it's like, you know, inertia and... And whatnot, keeping it moving. Ooh. You're doing great, though. 
I've played this guy before. Yeah. I know his tricks. Oh, this sucks. Oh, this sucks. Yeah, he calls down light or something like that. That's what it looks like. Oh. Did that hit you a lot? Yeah, it hit me a little. It hit, to, it hit me a little bit. Yeah, it seemed to I killed bad. him before the rest of his attack got off. So okay, that's what it. It seemed kind of anticlimactic. Is that what it it's, was? It's a big. It's a I big, didn't know what he was gonna do. It's a big uh, AOE attack, and it's a. Uh, oh, this guy. I thought it was gonna be like. He's that. like, oh, you think you're gonna get an item? Uh. Hey, you killed that giant guy. Let me stab you real quick. I think the reason I like oh, this game no, is you because you can't. Whoa, what was that? Debris. Um, something debris. Debris blew it behind oh, me. Oh, Debris. It's Debris. I, I like this game. I like these games so much is because every enemy that you encounter, you have to take seriously. You yes. can't. You can't phone it in on any any one of these guys could kill me in two or three hits. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it makes it interesting. It makes it a really interesting game. It's like playing like Fallen Order, but they're just all are, are, <laughs> it's like playing Doom Eternal, but they're all marauders. Right. They're all marauders. They can all. And you gotta just okay. I guess I. Yeah. I'll ignore everybody else on the battlefield. I gotta just kill you. Cool. Cool. Fun. Fun. And then in the DLC, they doubled down. And they were like, no, you like the Marauders, don't you, bitch? <laughs> like, yes. Yes, I love them. It Thank you. so good. Uh, have you played... Uh, were you talking about Doom or Doom Eternal just now? Was that... Uh, Eternal. Eternal? I haven't played it. Is, Which like? I still... I haven't finished the DLC for it, because like I said, they doubled down on those Marauders. Right. And I was just like, I'm going to go back to the levels that You're I like, have cheat put me codes back. for. Put me back to Tom Nook. I'll pay my mortgage. Oh, All Tom right. Nook's bonded servitude. Yeah. Did they ever make any... Uh, do you have any, like, video game merchandise? Like stuffed animals or oh, figurines very, or anything like that? Very little. Um, never really get... And that was Are never, you going to kill me? No way. Ooh, three of them kind of... Dude, I thought that was it. Woo! Yeah, three guys just jumped you. Look at this guy, he's just gonna start flailing like crazy. Yeah, he's berserk. You have those moments in this game where you kind of tense up and you're like, Is it, is it happening? Where three, where three just normal enemies team up on you and it's game over, baby. Yeah, they were pretty formidable there yeah. for a minute. Jeez. No, but you know like that uh, merchandise they would have for video games just like around registers or like at Hot Topic and Spencers and stuff like that, like that you would see around. Like, I never got into that kind of stuff, but no. I, didn't, I don't collect like anime style figurines or anything either. I have a couple of toys. Things here and there. Here just and lying there. about. But yeah, I, I made a choice at a certain point where I was just like, unless it's specifically like important to me like i'm not just gonna collect for the sake of having a full collection or something anymore we got a pretty good me, me and my wife we have a pretty good collection of nerd stuff yeah but it's you, right behind us too you also have a theme and kind of like yeah is there it, a theme i don't think there's not, a theme i think there's I mean, that's just i know i think that. there's a theme for each yeah there's a theme for person. her for her thing and there's a theme for mine yeah that's what i'm saying like as, as knowing you i can see the theme and i just think that it does go together i mean it's all nerd stuff let's be real right it's not like you're like, and this is my Green Bay Packers shelf right next to my Warhammer figures. It's like, no, that's not that's not how it's going down. This is house. my sign. Dig old Bix. <laughs> <laughs> the guy at the store said it was the same. <laughs> it's exactly the same. I love that joke from Solar Opposites. Uh, it's, God, it's funny. That one really hit. That joke really hit. So yeah, I oh, I was gonna tell you too before we stop completely talking about documentaries. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Before we get I too got off track here. I got one for you, because this is becoming the story where I just recommend you a thing. And I you usually like it, watch it, too. And you like it. I'm just saying, I have a pretty good track record. We like the same. We, we like we're similar pretty, stuff. We're pretty similar people. Come on. Our algorithms are pretty similar. Oh, yeah. For sure. Uh, the Did you watch the Zen Diaries of Gary Shandling when those came out a while back? No, uh-uh. Now, I don't know if you missed... Kind of. I don't know Gary, much about. Yeah, I, I don't general, know much about Gary Shandling. You're a little young. I mean, we both are. I was like, like, wait a second. I'm. I'm literally. Nerd. I'm literally older than you. You're, you're a little young for me. this. Like you're a little young for this. Uh, <laughs> you you are in comedy nerd years, is what I'm saying. Because oh sure. It just you, yeah. I had sought out his stuff. Like when his show, the Larry Sanders show, and stuff like that was big in the '90s. That was like a little too old for me. Okay. But I sought it out later, and it's on HBO now. Anyway. When he passed away, uh, Judd Apatow made a two-part documentary, like a big, long documentary. A big whole thing. About Gary and just kind of his whole philosophy and his life and his work and told not only through like home movies and his writing and stuff, but interviews with obviously everybody in the comedy community who knew him. Yeah. 
and it's re- it's a really beautiful documentary like you you don't I can't stress enough. You don't need to be some Gary Shandling aficionado. Like, even if you only know him. Every time I've seen him pop up, he makes me laugh. Have you seen his cameo in Zoolander? Yeah. Was like, do not be distracted by the beautiful celebrities and Gary <laughs> Shandler's, like, finger guns. The, the, the soft thing. I remember. It's a good bit. Yeah. It's a great bit because it's Gary Shandling. And you go, I don't really know why I'm laughing at this, but I know that it's funny. Right. It's definitely it's funny. Yeah, you know Gary. It's like, yeah, that's weird to see him. Anyway, some funny, they just... It's they, a good bit. I like the way it's described, and we'll finish with this, is some people, and who was it? Emma Stone in Zombieland? Yeah. She was describing Bill Murray, and every time he said anything, she laughed at him. And she's like, he just has a direct line to my funny bone. Yeah, yeah. And that's a good way to describe some comedians and people that are fans of said comedian. Well, Sometimes was, people are just funny. You think they're funny because you like the way they are. You well, know? and there's that aspect of it, and what it marries really nice to in the documentary is the the kind of philosophy behind it of him basically trying his whole life to to be his most authentic self. Okay, that was basically that's his, tough to do, baby. But that's a tall order, right? Like that's I mean that's all anybody could ever hope to achieve in some sense. So yeah, it's a very it's called the Zen Diaries of Gary Shanley. I highly recommend it. Um, I watch it. I've watched it a couple of times now. I mean, like I said, it's two parts. It's long, but it's really like it's. It'll suck you in, man, and you'll kind of. I think you'll dig the philosophy a lot. Hell yeah! We're gonna wrap it up there, and uh, so we need. To, there's two things you got to do: homework. Watch that. Watch Gary Shandling. Even if you just watch like his late show appearances and stuff, you'll get a sense of who he is. And a little more accessible for all these '90s kids, like if you're like us. Even if you're not like us, if you have any kind of attachment to the 90s, even if, like, let's say you were raised in the 2000s, whatever, you know what a Beanie Baby is. If you've watch, ever seen or heard of a Beanie Baby at all, go watch Beanie Mania on HBO Max. It's yeah, it'll, fantastic. It'll flood you with memories you don't even remember having about the 90s. It's great. Next time we're going to take on Vort of the Boreal Valley, and we'll see how Sassy Ass Sal does. Killing it, Sassy Sal. <laughs>